Hey, how's everyone doing today? Uh, welcome back to Jason's Tech Talk. Now, here about two months ago, we did a video about how to overclock the Ryzen 5 3600. Um, I got a lot of response from that video, uh, and I want to let everybody know how much I appreciate the response from that video. But we did have some questions come up from the video. Um, uh, a little bit more information about the Ryzen 5 3600 has came available since the video was done. And uh, I'd like to answer some of those questions today and just touch on it a little further from uh, where we were two months ago. Uh, first, we were working with the, the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, uh, which is a six core uh, CPU at six cores, 12 threads. It has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz uh, with a max boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz, uh, which with the overclock we were doing was a was an all core overclock, um, whereas the boost clock usually just gets one core up to the 4.2 gigahertz, and it's very heat and um, energy uh, dependent, so it doesn't happen very often or for very long, uh, and that's the reason we do an overclock. Uh, now we had some questions um, that people have asked uh, about the the overclock. Um, the first one um, is from something, and uh, his question is, uh, "What kind of cooler do you have? I can't get past 4.1 megahertz without the temperatures reaching as high as 95 degrees Celsius. If I set it for 4200 and all cores, the PC restarts and the overclock resets." Okay, first off, if your temperatures are getting anywhere around 95 degrees, please turn your computer off. Um, the the Ryzen 30, the Ryzen's uh, third 3000 series, uh, the Zen 2s, they do not work well with heat. Um, my Ryzen. At 81 degrees, automatically shuts off. I can't even get anywhere near 95 degrees Celsius. Um, now they say 95 degrees Celsius is um, the max temperature that the P that the chip will work at. Like I said, 81, and mine just shuts off. So, um, but if you're getting any kind of temperature like that, please turn your computer off. Get a better cooler lower your overclock uh, but if you're getting that kind of degree uh, temperature I'm saying even with uh, at, at factory settings you're still going to be running too hot um, for this chip um, so there again if you you know if your temperatures are that high please uh, turn your computer off don't tear it up um, now I will answer his question um, first, I will recommend a couple of cheap or a couple of cooler, or I will recommend a cooler. Um, one of the first ones I'd go with if you're looking for a good cheap cooler, and I and I tell people about this one all the time is the Gamex 400. It's a twenty dollar cooler. Most of the time, you can get it on Amazon or eBay for fourteen to twenty five dollars. Um, it's a basic cooler, um, but for the price, it's very good. Uh, I've ran many CPUs with this cooler. Um, and, and it does really well for a cheap cooler um, and as you can see here the application with the Intel sockets um, it's up to 130 watts the, the, and it'll work with the LGA 20s, the LGA 1366 um, 11 uh, fives, the LGA 775s all of the AMD sockets AM4, AM3, AM2 uh, all the way down to FM2. Um, it'll basically work with anything. It's got brackets in there to work with anything. It's just a good little cheap cooler. Nothing fancy. Um, and, and it's got a little color to it, So, but that really doesn't matter when it comes to the actual usage of the cooler. But it, it's for the price. It's not a bad cooler. Uh, now, what I use is um, I have a water-cooled system. Um, Everything I have is EK except for the water block on my CPU, which is a Glacier C um, 350A. Um, I did use 
um, an EK Fluid 240 system, but the um, CPU water block heat sink, um, it was had a curve in it, and uh, EK was would answer my questions on what they thought the problem was, but when it came right down to it, they pretty much, when I asked them to replace it or or to help me out, the agent just quit cut ties with me and, and wasn't returned my uh, calls. Um, now the pump on the EK Fluid Gaming um, was a very nice, uh, worked very well. The, the graphics card cooler very well. The CPU heat sink sucked ass. Um, the, the radiator, very nice. Uh, everything about the cooling system was good except for the CPU block. So I uh, ju just wasn't very happy with that. Um, if the customer service would have been a little bit better and and maybe they would have offered to send me a new CPU block, it <laughs> maybe it would have been a little bit better because there's definitely something wrong with the one they sent me, but they're too conceited to, uh, to think that what they did could possibly be wrong. Okay. Um, now on to our next question. Um, this is for, uh, I'm going to mess this up, uh, Bukhari Mustafa. Uh, well, this overclocking in the CPU's life after a period of time, years, months, maybe. Um, what's the side effect? Um, uh, overclocking your system, um, it's... As long as you keep your temperatures in check and you don't get stupid with your voltage, uh, overclocking is not going to degrade your uh, system any more than just day-to-day -day use. Um, now we have um, found out a little bit more information about the uh, Ryzen 5 3600 since... Um, I overclocked mine two months ago. There's been a lot of tests done on the heating um, and the degradation and stuff, and a little more information came out um, about the uh, overall uh, voltage that the 53600 uh, can handle. Um, from what I can gather, um, the older the 52600. Um, could handle up to about 1.45 volts without any degradation. Um, the one, the 53600s uh, under 1.35 volts seems to be a safe zone. A lot of people still say under 1.3 volts. Uh, I've ran mine up to 1.4 without really any degradation. Um, I haven't seen any uh, any negative effects on mine. Um, but I will say this, um, with the better cooling system that I have now, um, I've been running my system at 1.275 volts, um, uh, with no problem with the 4.3 gigahertz overclock. Um, so the lower voltage you can get, um, the lower temperatures you can run, it's always going to be better. Um. But I still think as long as you keep your voltage as low as you can, you're going to be okay. The, the lower you can run it, the better. But, you know, don't get crazy. Um, I'd say 1.35 and under is going to be okay. You're going to get a little degradation, but you're going to get that anyway. Um, I wouldn't run the 1.4 that um, most of the motherboards set your... When you... When you go into your manual, it automatically sets it to 1.4 volts, especially Ryzen Master sets it to 1.4 volts. I wouldn't run that. I would go below 1.35 if I could, and below 1.3 if possible. Okay, now on to our next question. Um, let's see. I Hacker says, I have a 4.2 gigahertz at 1.33 volts. Stable in Prime 95 and Cinebench R20, but in Cinebench I get temperatures at 74 and in Prime 95, 79. I'm planning to keep this chip for long, so I'm going to lower it back to 244 and call it a day. Don't want to overclock. That is a good idea. Um, 
1.33, I believe you're going to be pretty safe. 4.2, um, and I, and I'm saying if he goes back to 4.2, he's going to get you know he could probably run a 1.3 volts. Um, uh, he says he haven't tried any lower. I'm sure he could get a little bit lower, but you know that would be a really good idea. I like to see people using their head. Uh, does overclocking your CPU in the BIOS versus using the Ryzen Master software make a difference? Uh, I'm planning on building my PC soon, and I won't overclock. I'm just nervous I might end up damaging the PC. I will say this, if you've never done overclocking before, Ryzen Master is a great tool for that. Um, with Ryzen Master, there's almost no chance of you being able to damage your CPU. It will shut you down before you can do any damage. And unlike going into the BIOS, um, you know, it does not automatically apply, apply your overclock when your system starts. Um, I know with uh, Afterburner, with my GPU, I got in a loop one time. I accidentally put in an extra zero, and every t before it could load up to where I could stop it, it was loading and shutting my computer down, so I was caught in a loop. Um, I had to take my video card out. Luckily, I had onboard uh, graphics at the time, so I could just go in, uh, stop the, the overclock, and then go back in and put your card in. Uh, but it's, it's better, if you've ne and especially if you've never done overclocking, it's better to use the software. Uh, the chances of damping anything are less. But now I will say this, once you get your overclock and you're using it, you know, you can apply it and use it and you're stable. Um, then you can go transfer that into your BIOS. Um, and it's usually pretty easy. Um, you watch a few videos. Um, there's some out there uh, on a lot of the different um, UF, UF, UEFIs or BIOS um, on, on how to get, navigate them and put the information in correctly. Um, but that's what I would do. Uh, I would first, if you've never used, done any overclocking, I would do it in the software, and then once you get comfortable with it, move on to actually putting it into your BIOS. Um, now, that's all the questions um, we have today. Um, I can't think of any other information. Uh, to just throw at you. Uh, I hope this video helped. If it did, uh, hit me with a comment down below. If it didn't, let me know and let me, you know, let me know what you would do different. Um, hope everyone enjoyed it and come back and see us. Have a great day.